So we're just waiting that she enters. And we can speak a little bit about her life, about her dancing. Yeah, probably the new generation don't really know, but you have checked YouTube and you will, you will like it. Beata and Venting, you write on the YouTube and you will find many videos of them. Hello. So Beata Onefater and uh, Michael Venting. Yeah, actually, I have question to her about her surname. Because if you, if you check here, let's see. Hello, guys. Nice to see you. Nice, nice to see you as well. Can you hear me well? Yeah, yes. we hear you good. You, we okay. hear you good. Well, nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, nice to meet you. This is what I was saying also to the people that I saw many videos of you, you dancing, but I've never met you also to see your live dancing. And of course, personally, I've never talked to you. So it's very excited to, to know you also a little bit as a person. Likewise, thank you for me as well. <laughs> so actually, I was checking your uh, biography on your website and you are coming from Lithuania. Yes. So uh, my first question, can you speak Russian as well? Yeah, of course I can. Wow. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of that. <laughs> Great. So uh, how old you were actually when you moved to States? Uh, I was at around 15. Yes, yeah, so 15. I started in Lithuania when I was six. I danced there when I was 15. And then around 15, we moved with my whole family. We moved to America. But you moved because of the dancing or they had some job? No, we actually, all my, fa like everybody from my family is here. So we were the last ones to move. And because of my dancing, my parents kept staying there because they knew that if I come maybe to America, I might stop. But at the end, we all came here. And of course, dancing stopped for a little bit, but then it started again here. So, yeah. Nice. So I also read on your website that you made many, many other kind of uh, dance, uh, dancing and also like preparation for your body, like ballet or many, many other things you did when you were small. Actually, never did ballet. No, I, when I was young, we really just did dancing, ballroom, Latin, so that's it. When I became older, of course, we, myself and Michael, were very much into gym and just working out and things like that, just for conditioning, but never done ballet. <laughs> yes. So from where came that beautiful and amazing body? Because I watched like all videos and I, I, and I was like, for sure she knew that she has so good body that always she had like two pieces uh, dresses, you know? Well, thank you for the compliment. You know, obviously, I think genetics is a lot of a lot of it. But like I said, we always used to, you know, make sure that we work out and we eat right. And I think dancing as well really does a lot of help. You know, helps a lot. But never done anything else besides that. <laughs> cool. That's nice. Nice. But actually, you had great bodies, and even Michael. I mean, Michael was like. Full. Well, you know, actually, Michael, his family, they are his father and his brother they into bodybuilding. So, so they do like compete and stuff like that. So it, it is running in his family as well. Yeah. Wow. That's nice. So you said that you started to dance. How old you were? I was six. Six years old. Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, the question about your dance partners. Uh, with whom you think you liked to dance the most? Well, you know, my, my major, like the most years that I've danced and the most achievements I've had was of course Michael so I would say those 10 years were the most memorable you know through good through bad but definitely those were the most successful years and I would say that would be my you know, most memorable partnership for sure. Nice. Nice. Okay and uh, during your dancing career uh, did you have some difficulties um, or maybe some funny or difficult situation on the dance floor? I think we all have it. You know, like, like dresses, you know, straps falling off and you have to, 
hold on or somebody hitting you in the face. I remember one time actually at the World Championship in Japan, uh, we were, I was upside down and, the, and then I just see this leg coming at me. Somebody was doing a ronde and it went straight into my face. Ouch. And everything. And I don't know if you've been to, of course you've been to Japan, but over there very much on time. So they cannot waste a second. And we, it was semifinal. And I remember saying, can you stop the competition? And it's so I can say, no, 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 time, we have to go, this competition has to finish particular time, but everybody's giving me napkins, you know, to put it up my nose, and then straight I went to the next dance. So, yeah, of wow. course, things like that happen, I think, to everybody. So you are a fighter. <laughs> Always. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. nice. So, and question is for now, because like many young um, dancers probably they don't really know. Uh, you, for us, uh, happens as well. Sometimes like uh, we, we practice uh, or um, uh, Franco is teaching us and then some young uh, couples are coming in and they ask like, who, who is this man? You know, and for us, you and all uh, people from your generation like stars and we we till today watching videos and we are till today learning something out of you and like people probably like young generation they don't really know so uh, my question is um what are you doing now are you teaching or what is your job how you are connecting to the dancing or not absolutely yes of course i'm teaching i don't have my own studio but i do teach i just travel around the country i judge as well here you know so i think that's what happens when you retire from a dancing career then you move into teaching judging so definitely i do that i also have a company that we make dance costumes here in america so, mm -hmm. people as well. so i'm still connected in the dance world just because i don't travel to europe so much anymore so i guess that's why you know a lot of people don't see me anymore but yeah. in america i'm I'm around. <laughs> Clear. No, but actually, it's it's a it's a very funny thing because, for example, what happened to me the most strange was the most strange. Yes, was uh, uh, like Christina just spoke about Franco. One time, I we came out from the competition, we won some competition, and then one small boy wanted to make a picture with us, and he saw Franco with us, so he asked him <laughs> to make a picture with us. You know, and the thing is, I was asking him, "Do you know who this is?" And then he said, "No." And then, and then I went like, I went like, okay, actually, uh, I should hold the phone. <laughs> the phone and I should make you a picture with him. But he was not bothered about that. I, I, I got a little, uh, I was a bit sensitive of this because, but it's probably the time changes. The generations are changing, you know, because before we didn't have this opportunity of internet so much. Yes? So we just had these video cassettes and there were video cassettes, for example, in 1999, when we got the video cassette, or in 2000, when we got the video cassette, we watched it, and there were actually competitions from 96 or 95. But for that, for us, this was really fresh, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> so. I think also what happened now because of the different federations that we all split before everything was under one federation, even though it was amateur professional, like we still were under the same umbrella. Now, because there's so many different splits that people don't even watch anymore. You know, they just stay with their own federation. They don't know what's happening on the other side. So I think it's just everything has changed. Plus, like you said, the internet and everything. So yeah, things have changed. True. So I already posted uh, in my stories and writing all your titles and it was like just champions all, all over, you know. And my question is, you had so many titles and you achieved so much, yes? Did your dreams become true or you still want to something, you know, in your life? You go for it still. Of course, with the dancing part, I think it all became true, you know. You know, I'm sure like you we all dream to become the world champion. We dream to one black pole. I did that. Yes, I know it was all in amateur. But of course, sometimes you want to do the same in the professional. But for me, I think when I stopped, when things happened, I was satisfied. Like I was content with my life. Like a lot of times I think what happens when dancers stop and they still want to continue, then they have a very difficult time stopping. I didn't really have that so much. So I feel like, yeah, I'm very happy where in the professional, in, in my dance career, I'm very happy it happened and no regrets for sure. That's great. The, uh, I wish myself to stop the dancing with the same feeling that this <laughs> is it and not to come back, you know? Right. Another, yes. another question to you, like you, how old you were when you stopped? I was still very young, actually. I think I was not even 30 
it. I was wow. like, he, you see, the, the thing what happened uh, when we decided to start with Michael, uh, we just decided because we wanted to be friends. We, we thought that we would continue with different partners. Things did not happen that way. I have some tryouts here and there. At that time, it wasn't right for me. And then um, I actually continued with anybody else. So, and then the life husband and then you know you kind of your shift changes and I was fine with it but I think sometimes people stop and they still want to compete or and dance and then it becomes very hard but I was very young when I stopped yeah so it means you went to professional also very young how old you were when you moved to professional uh, let me see well uh, I was in 22 I think around that <laughs> I wow. went Blackpool. I went, I could still do youth at Blackpool when we were mm -hmm. on, yeah, amateur. I could still because so my, actually she was the youngest one. So how old you were when you were world champion actually? Uh, uh twenty one. Twenty one. So uh -huh. you're like 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 you? I was twenty two. Yeah. Christina was twenty two. Because yeah, Joanne was, John, John she was, was uh, 18 nine, or 19. 19 yeah. Yeah, exactly. right. yeah. Because we're always talking who is the youngest one, you know, <laughs> to win. So it's like, yeah, that's incredible. Okay, and then um, because you were retired, you stopped the dancing and then you came back for the shows with uh, Max. And how long was the break? A uh, break was at least five years, at least probably five to six years. Uh, and then... Uh, it actually was very interesting how the whole thing happened. He just called me because we're both in America and we never knew each other, but I guess he already stopped with Yula and he was bored. He needed something to do. And he called me and he said, literally the, his words were, you don't have to do anything. I have costume will be taken care of. Lesson will be taken care of. Everything will be taken care of. You just have to come to the studio and practice with me. Are you interested? I'm Is like, you know, let me think about it. Of course, like, at that time of my life, I was like, sure, let's see how it goes. And for two years, we did that. We were very busy. We had shows almost, you know, every month. And it was very nice. Just for those two years, we felt like after the two years, they were, we were done, which was fine. But yeah, it was a very nice experience. Nice. Great. Nice. So, which was actually the idea and the goal to continue with the Max to make shows? We, what you had in the in the head, you know, it's like not just okay, let's let's do it. Or you had something in in your head. You know, I guess I still wanted to, to dance, you, I, to feel how it feels after such a long break. But of course, there was no pressure for competing, so I did not have. Of course, to get ready for competition, even though we practiced a lot, but ready, but not the same you know when you do shows it was it's still different kind of thing so it was nice to push myself just to see how i would feel and it was, you know i knew that at that time the competition was not for me definitely but to do shows and just you know to enjoy that feeling still nice i must say cool just uh, read some comments because everybody's writing there love you Beata, and all, all of that but you see that the people are uh, happy to see you as well so, and the um, question also about your dancing career. Who were your teachers? Thanks to whom you think that you became great dancer as you are? Maybe because of them or yeah, maybe part of them, of course, took part on, on your development. Well, you know, uh, of course, we had a few teachers through the dance career. So it was like our teachers were, uh, sorry, trying to fix Shirley Ballas. Uh, Peter Maxwell and Lorraine, those were the main teachers when we were dancing with Michael for those uh, 10 years. But my, I think my beginning started definitely in Lithuania and my teachers were again and Olga Grinko. I'm sure you heard that name. Yes, yes. Uh, and uh, they, I think they gave me the, obviously the start, they gave me the foundation. And to this day, I definitely think that they were the ones to start me on this path for sure. Wow, nice. The world is small still, you see, because we actually, uh, we have a contact with many people, you said, especially uh, Bunko, yes. And uh, of course, Peter Maxwell is also one of our teachers. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's yeah. still... Nice. Yeah, very, very, very nice to hear that. Right. And going back to your competition, um, 
uh, career? Uh, which competition you remember and you would like? Of course, you said that you, you don't have that wish to come back, but mm -hmm. if you would be, I don't know, 20 years back, you say, I would like to repeat that competition. Which, which competition you love to that? You know, what comes into my mind, I'm sure now competitions are very different and they, it's changed, but and the, one, the two that come to my mind, they're not exist anymore. One is actually in South Africa. It's it's uh, uh, Sun City. Uh, it's called ah, oh, that was World Championship. Yeah, oh, that was yeah. 1998. Uh, of course, it's a, such a beautiful experience. It's so different. The, the whole place and everything. And of course, because we represented South Africa, it was very nice to always get back there. Probably that would be one of the competitions, but I don't think it's exists anymore. And the other one is actually also it's not in, anymore in the same hotel, but it's United States. <laughs> USDC, where before it used to be in the Fountain Blue in Miami, in this beautiful hotel where all the top couples were invited and professionals, everything was paid. And I think anybody who danced that competition to this day would say that probably it was one of the best competitions, just because it's a little bit of a holiday and everybody would meet there. It, it, I think those are the two that definitely like sticks into my mind right away. Yeah, I think we, we miss that. Um, of course, we have many good competition, but mm -hmm. we've never done something like that. We heard from many people some competition like this in South Africa or other ones that like they were bringing them also with the helicopter or something like that. But in Monaco, yeah, we just heard something and we like couldn't believe that it, it could be something like but that. But you see, it's different, for example, because in our case, for example, we had also some nice... Uh, competitions like for example in Taiwan in Kaohsiung when it was the right. World Games you know it was like like but still, you can see like 12 13000 people and all this right. and, and but it's different like it's different. it's different depends i think also regarding the time but probably this particular stuff which which competition had they mm -hmm. they stayed with that competition and then right. you get you get different stuff so definitely yeah great <laughs> nice you want to ask me yes. about my actually, actually, I wanted to ask you something. I am very much watching. He's very about... much with the history. You know, all the years, who won, when, uh, all the couples, combination, everything. Sometimes he does. Ah, he, he, he remembered to me when, when it was, when I was dancing or whatever. Because from this point of view, we are completely opposite. Yes. yes. So anyway, I basically, I'm living with you, all you guys in the head, in the brain, yes? So I know that you had the, the year 1998, you got world champions in amateur. And in the year 1997, you had a very strong challenge with Holger Nietzsche mm -hmm. and Charlotte. And yes. um, like, it's more or less like a general question. It's not really a question regarding only Holger or uh, Sh Charlotte, mm -hmm. but it's about how did you deal with that challenge? Because very often in the dancing life, through all the years, there was always somehow a challenge or often it was a challenge. Yes, probably not all the time. And we just wanted to ask you how we deal. I remember there was, for example, this IRD Masters Gala where you needed to dance like against each other because you had equal markings and all this stuff. So uh, then, for example, what I know also that uh, uh, I, I think it was the year when he got third in Blackpool, Holger, but he had a lot of standing ovation. Then the year after was not anymore the same. And then, of course, all these vibes, you as a competitor just wanted you to share a bit about that. Well, you know, uh, with Hulk and Charlotte, of course, they were one of the biggest oppositions, but we really love the dancing. So, you know, it's, I think it's always better when you know that whoever is your opposition that you like them, because a lot of times people have opposition and they think like, oh, not really my cup of tea, but we really like the dance. So they pushed us. And of course, you know, if you would lose to them, we, as any sports sport person, you would get slightly disappointed of course but we knew that they were good so they pushed us to get even better you know so it was always yes it was always a challenge but we were never so upset that because we know that they were good so we were beaten by a couple who was a great couple not by somebody who would maybe in our opinion was a couple so it just kept us on our toes all the time we could never back you know, and just kind of they always kept us on our toes which is good i think i think Competition is a healthy thing. I think it's a very good thing to have a good competition so you push each other. That's how you grow. So yes, with Holger and Charlotte, 
really like the young and I think it was great that they pushed us to get better and hopefully we did the same for them I think I think nowadays we have to learn from all of you how great dancers you all were and how big respect to each other you had because sometimes we have the feeling that nowadays we lose a little bit of that and sometimes it gets so much into the fight and the people doesn't really appreciate anymore the competitors but they just want to fight and this was nice that you also say that they actually pushed to get better Oops. And Sorry. probably don't worry everybody. and probably also they felt the same towards you that is I, nice I to hear that's I definitely I think when you like your competitors when you like how how good they are I think it's a positive thing to agree because when you think like if whoever beats you not good I think it creates a very negative feeling but when they are good it it makes you better it it become better for sure Nice. So now a, a bit speaking with you, I could see that you are so positive a person and I love it because also we, me and Marius, we love this kind of people who is full of life. Yeah. And uh, we have to be, oh, we have to be, especially what's happening around the world. It's just, I think, and yeah, I think positivity is a very important thing. Yeah. And uh, now I want to go to one very sensitive. delicate, sensitive question, yes. because I don't know if people know, uh, but uh, you had some problem with the health and mm -hmm. you managed to deal with that. And mm -hmm. now you are healthy and everything is fine. But probably if you could tell a little bit about that story, like when you knew what happened to you and how you deal to that, because like watching you, you are full of life and I mean, this situation didn't kill you, but it makes you stronger and you, you go forward. And probably for some people as well now with this situation, uh, they are getting a little bit negative and they see the life is dark and everything is bad. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. So, yes, basically it, in, uh, at the end of November 2015, I got diagnosed with stage 4 ovarian cancer. It came as a surprise because I did go to doctors before. I was always very much on top of everything. So in one month from being completely healthy, I was almost, you know, stage four, which is a very big uh, difference. Uh, yes, uh, it changes your life completely. But I think what, uh, what helped me that, like you say, I was very, I, I did not, think of it as such a bad, I guess maybe now when I look back at it, it was bad, but when I was going through it, to me, it was just like, a, yeah, it's a flu. I will go, have to do this and this and, you know, there's treatments. And then at the end of it, I will be better. But now, of course, it's, it was much serious than what I thought. But because I think, because my mind was like that, and plus everybody around me, like my husband, my parents, my family, everyone was so positive that I was never in that position where we would sit there and, you know, like cry. This is the end of the world. I never had that feeling. And I think just because of all of that sounding around me, I just knew that I just, this is what we have to do. I had a clear plan, you know, how long it's going to take. And everything like month by month, it started getting better. Like I, you know, so I think it's just your mind is very strong thing. Yeah. It's definitely very strong. I think also what helped being a dancer, we are very fit people. We we know how hard it is to go through what we go on a regular basis, getting ready to compete and everything. It does prepare us for something like this, situations like that, in comparison to just regular person who maybe works in the office nine to five. It definitely, we have so much more strength and resilience to all of that. So all of that combined, Plus my age, usually when people get into that disease, it's much older. So I think the combination of everything definitely helped. But I think the, the you know, the, the positivity around me and the whole dance world, you know, there was so much, like I was getting so many messages. There was, I definitely felt that there was so many positive lights around me that I think it definitely helped for sure. Beautiful, nice. Very good. 
And you just mentioned about your husband. Uh, can we know who is he and he's connected to the dancing, sports, or how you met him? He, I, I met him actually face to face. I met him in America. He was one of the first people I met when I came here in 94. We already know each other from 94. But he already saw me because he, originally he's from Ukraine, from Kiev. Ah, and he nice. saw me, I danced there but we just never met when I was there so when we met here for the first time we were friends all this time you know while I was competing he was a dancer here as well but then he stopped and he completely changed his careers but because I still kept on in touch with him we were always friends we just yes I know him for since 94 oh um, wow yeah. so, long. <laughs> so his name is Zach because somebody is writing yes. uh -huh. his name is uh yes he, he, his name was changed here yeah, originally he was a different name in ukraine he his cousin when he came to america changed to make it more american so it uh -huh. became that. <laughs> but yeah <laughs> and how was his original name vladislav vladislav oh, <laughs> and actually let's come to your name because your name it's actually, we are living in Germany. Yes. Right? And it's not really the spelling, but if you translate it like it sounds, it means without father. Yes. So you have like one father. Yes. yes. So how come, which is the, uh, or, which is the... Uh, sure, because obviously I'm from Lithuania and I have not many on a father's surnames in Lithuania for sure. It's only really our family, like immediate family. I have no idea how that happens, but... <laughs> I do know that in German it means without a father, and I still I know that when we used to compete, I they, they always used to use my surname in in Europe. Besides, actually, not only in Germany, everywhere else it's always Beata only because, especially in English as well, people don't read it Ona; they read one, so they read one fatter, or you know. So that's why from the beginning, <laughs> from that, they said we're not using it just because of that reason but in germany they always say it's still my surname <laughs> yes because they because are... they felt their their name you know? <laughs> right <laughs> that's nice that's nice okay i think we're coming to the end and it was nice to talk to you to, to feel your positiveness and to know a little bit about you also like a person and about your um thinking and seeing your the dancing it was nice to, to to hear it all and probably if you can give some short wishes or motivation words to to the to all the dancers in the world you know um i think the way things happening right now and what like the past what happened with my health i see that when we used to compete we always used to just push ourselves everything was just dance 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 time of you know, we have to go to another practice we have to get ready i think what's happening now and like going through what i went through we all need to take some time to some maybe take a day off if you want to go and have a nice dinner do that because we never know what tomorrow will bring life is so short i think we want we should to try enjoy as much as possible every single day don't live for that one day one day when i stop i'll do it. or one day i i think Within the reasons, I think we all should live for today and enjoy some, so there's a good balance in life because I think that's what a lot of times when, we, especially when we're young, we think, oh, I'm strong, I'm going to do that some in the future. Let's not wait for that future. Do some things now because that's also going to help your, you know, your mind, your body, and just become much more rounded person. I think that's what I would say to everybody. Listen to your body, listen to your mind, take some time to do other things. Don't just be only one way. Great. Very Amazing nice. words. Thank you very much, Piata. Nice You're to welcome. see you. Nice to know you a little bit more. And we wish you a lot of health. Stay the same positive as you are. And have a nice day today. Thank you. you as well, guys. Good luck with everything. Nice bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.